Hello. We are about to read the last chapter of Mr. Popper's Penguin, chapter 20. So if you're joining me, please turn to chapter 20. See? Whoa, there it is, chapter 20. Farewell, Mr. Popper. It was a hard decision to make. After a rather long after the visitors had gone, Mr. and Mrs. Popper sat and discussed what was best for everybody. Mrs. Popper could see the advantages of both offers, and she pointed these out, trying to influence him. I feel that the penguins are really your responsibility, she said, and you must just make up your mind. It was a pale and haggard Mr. Popper who was ready to announce his decision the next day. Mr. Klein, he said, I want you to know how much I appreciate your offer of putting my birds in the movie, but I'm afraid I have to refuse. I do not believe life in Hollywood would be good for the penguins. Then he turned to Admiral Drake. Admiral Drake, I'm going to give you the birds. In doing this, I'm considering the birds first of all. I know that they have been comfortable and happy with me. Lately, though, with the excitement in the warm weather, I've been worried about them. The birds have done so much for me that I have to do what is best for them. After all, they belong in a cold climate. And then I can't help being sorry for those men up at the North Pole without any penguins to help them pass their time. Your government will thank you, Mr. Popper, answered the Admiral. Congratulations, Admiral, said Mr. Klein. Maybe you're right at that, Popper. Hollywood might have been too much for the birds. I wish you'd let me make one short movie of them here in New York, though, before they go. Just some pictures of sort of the things they do on stage, you know. We'd show the film everywhere with an announcement that these are the famous Popper penguins that are being taken to the North Pole by Admiral Drake of the United States Arctic Penguin Founding Expedition or something like that. I'd like that very much, said Mr. Popper. We'd pay you, of course, continued Mr. Klein. Not a fortune, as we could have if you'd let us have them a contract, but say $25,000? We could use it, said Mrs. Popper. It will be very quiet at 432 Proudfoot Avenue, said Mr. Popper, when everyone had left. Mrs. Popper did not answer. She knew nothing she could say would really comfort him. However, said Mr. Popper, now that spring is here, a lot of people will be wanting their houses painted, so we'd better be getting back. Anyway, said Bill, we've had 10 whole weeks of vacation right in the middle of the year, and not many children in Stillwater can say that. The next day, the camera cameraman arrived to make the picture of the penguins doing their trip. It was arranged that the poppers could stay in New York just long enough to see the expedition off. Here's the picture. The Admiral Drake, the movie guy, Mr. Popper, and all of his penguins. Meanwhile, in the harbor, the great sailing ship of Admiral Drake was being made ready for its long trip north. Every day, huge boxes of supplies of all sorts were hustled on board. The most comfortable quarters on the ship were turned over to the penguins, who were the cause of the voyage. Captain Cook was already quite familiar with the ship, since it was the same one the Admiral had sailed to the South Pole, where Captain Cook had often seen it. Greta, too, had seen vessels of its kind. The two of them were kept very busy showing and explaining everything to Nelson, Columbus, Louisa, Jenny, Scott, Magellan, Adelina, Isabella, Ferdinand, and Victoria. The sailors all took the greatest delight in watching the curious little birds at their explorations. It looks as if this will be a pretty lively trip, they would say. These pauper penguins certainly live up live up to their reputation. But, last, but at last, everything was ready and the day came when the poppers were to go down and say goodbye. Bill and Janie ran over all over the ship and did not want to leave when it was time to draw up the gangplank. 
The Admiral shook his hands, shook hands with them. And Mrs. Popper and thanked them for having helped to train the extraordinary penguins that were to be a real contribution to science. Mr. Popper had gone down below to say a private farewell to his birds. All that kept him from breaking down completely was the knowledge that what he was doing was best for them too. First, he said goodbye to all the younger penguins, then to Greta, who had saved Captain Cook. Then, last of all, he leaned over and said a special goodbye to Captain Cook, who had come and made life so different for Mr. Popper. Then he wiped his eyes, straightened his back, and went up on deck to say goodbye to Admiral Drake. Goodbye, Admiral Drake, he said. Goodbye, repeated the Admiral. Why? What do you mean? Aren't you coming with us? Me? Go to the North Pole? Why, of course not, Mr. Popper. But how could I go with you? I'm not an explorer or a scientist. I'm only a house painter. You're the keeper of the penguins, aren't you? Roared the Admiral. Man alive, aren't those penguins the reason for this whole expedition? See Mr. Popper with his penguins and he's wiping his eyes. Be sad. And who's going to see that they're well and happy if you're not going along? Go put on one of those fur suits like the rest of us. We're pulling anchor any minute. Mama shouted Mr. Popper to Mrs. Popper, who had already gone up the gameplay. I'm going to. I'm going to. Admiral Drake says he needs me. Mama, do you mind if I don't come home for a year or two? Oh, as to that, said Mrs. Popper, I'll miss you very much, my dear, but we have money to live on for a few years, and in winter it will be much easier to keep the house tidy without a man sitting around all day. I'll be getting back to Stillwater. Tomorrow is the day for the meeting of the Ladies' Aid and Missionary Society, and I'll be back just in time. So goodbye, my love, and good luck. Goodbye and good luck, echoed the children. And the penguins, hearing their voices, scuttled up on deck and stood there beside the Admiral and Mr. Popper. Then they solemnly lifted their flippers and waved as the great ship moved slowly down the river towards the sea. Did you expect Mr. Popper to go with the penguins? Did you think he would go? I thought he would go. But here's a very interesting piece of information about how this book was written. I'm really sad the book's over though because I really enjoyed it and I hope you did too. It says Richard Atwater and his wife Florence Atwater. Those are the authors of the book. Richard and Florence Atwater, husband and wife never intended to collaborate on a book. That means they never intended to work on this book together. Mr. Popper's Penguins was begun by Mr. Atwater, who was a newspaper columnist and a one-time classics instructor. It's like an instructor about books at the University of Chicago. But when a serious illness forced him to stop writing, Mrs. Atwater completed the story. And together they created one of the most beloved children's books of all time, Mr. Popper's Penguin. I hope you've enjoyed so much our one box, one book, one school, Mr. Popper's Penguin.